Welcome to our lecture online. We were in the process of trying to show you where that principle of least action came from, how to mathematically derive it. And in the previous video, we started with the concept that we had a path of least action. And then if we deviated from that path, we would have a different calculation for the action, which would then include the action for the path of least action, plus an additional calculation required for that deviation. And so what we said was if we want to be on the path of least action, this additional part must go to zero. And then in the previous video, we showed you that we were able to take this and write it according to that. In other words, we can then go ahead and replace this by our new form, because that way we could show that this quantity right here had to go to zero for all values of delta x, delta x representing the difference between the path of least action and the alternate path. And so if this quantity right here went to zero, we would then indeed have the least action. We also have to realize that at the endpoints, the delta x, the difference between the two paths, had to be zero because we had to start and end at the very same point. So therefore, we take what's inside these brackets right here, and we knew that this had to be equal to zero for all values of delta x, because if delta x is not equal to zero, that quantity had to be equal to zero. Now, let's compare that to our Lagrangian. Our Lagrangian was defined as the difference between the kinetic and the potential energy, and if we take a one-dimensional situation, then we can say that the Lagrangian is equal to one-half mv squared, minus mgx. Now, v can be written as dx dt, so one half m dx dt squared minus mgx. Or dx dt can be written as x dot, quantity squared then of course. Now, what if we take the partial derivative of that Lagrangian with respect to x dot? We take the derivative of this, or at least the partial derivative of this with respect to x dot, we get mx dot. Oh, I felt like I had to sneeze. And the derivative with respect to time of this quantity, when we take the derivative, we get mx double dot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the partial of L with respect to x, which is therefore equal to minus mg. In other words, if we take the derivative with respect to x, derivative of x is equal to 1, we get minus mg. And then if we take this portion right here, the ddt of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x dot, and subtract from that the parcel of the Lagrangian with respect to x, we get mx double dot plus mg, because we're subtracting the minus mg that gives us a plus mg. Now, for very careful notice, that mx double dot can be written like this, and mg is essentially the derivative of the potential energy, and therefore we can see that this quantity right here can now be represented by this. This is the exact same thing as what we have over there, which means that this, or what's inside the brackets here, which had to be zero for all values of delta x, for all alternate paths, that is equal to this quantity right here. So this is a representation of what's inside those brackets, which had to be zero for all values delta x. In other words, this expression represents the path of least action when we set this equal to zero, and that's the key. Now, one more thing. Notice that the negative gradient of the potential energy is equal to the force. So therefore, the m uh, the second derivative of x with respect to time plus the uh, derivative of the potential energy equal to being equal to zero, in other words, that's this quantity right here again. When we set that equal to zero, notice that this is really m times acceleration, and then the derivative of the potential energy, which essentially is the gradient of the potential energy, if we take the negative value of that, we get f. So that means that this is ma minus f equals zero, or, this should be an or, there we go, or <laughs> the force equals ma. With other words, this expression right here, which is the same as this expression, which is what ended up being inside the brackets when we were searching for the path of least action, that is essentially equal to F equals MA. And there we go. That is how we found the path of least action. We took a different path, an alternate path. We found a function that described the difference between those two paths as a function of X. Then we calculated 
the action for the alternate path, which gives us the action for the original path plus an additional action, then we showed that if the additional action calculated was equal to zero, then we're actually on the path of least action because then all we have is s, the delta s goes to zero, and we knew that that was the case when this quantity was equal to zero. And so essentially, this has to be set equal to zero. If we do, we then realize we have the equation that really describes f equals ma, which is derived from traveling on the path of least action. And that is how it's mathematically derived. It took four board falls to get there, but at least we finally did get there. And that is how it's done.